Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to the awesome overanalyzed at Overwatch Community Coaching Series. And if you'd like to send a video clip in for consideration to appear on this show, then all you need to do is go to the link in the video description below or go to unitlost.com forward slash overanalyzed. And remember, after any time the game updates, we are looking for more replays because we lose every replay before the update, which basically means we lose thousands of replays every time the game updates, which is massively crushing because we can't obviously do all of them before the game updates. Anyway, let's get stuck into this. So today we're going to take a look at a main support player. And as ever, this is the newer overanalyze where we do go into a lot more detail into just like all of the minor mistakes and things which are happening throughout the game. So we're going to play this and we're going to jump on board with our player who it is. I'm just going to turn down my volume a second. There we go. Awesome. It is Meatball. Now, the email says this. Hey, Sty, I've played the game casually until now, but I've decided I want to try out competitive. In the game, I am playing a Batiste, uh, and I do believe I'm playing well. It is not one of my better games. I am still working on consistency. When I bought the game, I was placed in gold. Then I climbed to level 350 in quick play. I have been steadily climbing this season. I intend to get to master on all of my roles. The only thing I notice I do poorly is my positioning sometimes. I want you to go really in depth. Okay. So, I mean, the thing, like, one of the things, um, before we begin this, let's just pause this, because we see this a lot. And I, I mean, I understand this is a little bit of a meme. It's like I've got good aim, bad positioning, all of that stuff. Like, just simply saying, I think my positioning's bad. In what regard? Like, I'm going to try and break it down for you in this video, and we'll see where you may go right or where you may go wrong. Um, but one of the things we need to always be aware of, and this also, guys, is a 2,900 rated game so it's a high plat game uh, and like as this player says they want to try and get to master with every role now there's a few things we need to look at before we get stuck into this now look at our team comp and try and think what is our primary role here well the other support we've got is a mercy great pick right now but the reason why we've got a mercy i'd assume is because we have got this in the sky now farrah mercy it's the age old combo i mean echo mercy is a better combo now but whatever Farrah's just been absolutely dumped on by the dev team, which seems to be the case with a lot of heroes. Anyway, who knows what they're doing? But she's going to be looking after the Farrah. So what are we thinking straight away in our head? Well, our main priority is to keep the front line alive. We're going to keep Reinhardt alive. We're going to keep McCree alive because he's very immobile. Uh, and we're going to need to pretty much stay, I don't want to say on top of him, but we're going to have to keep our eyes on him and Zarya as well. So these three are our primary focus. However, sometimes Mercy might assist with the healing and we need to be aware of when she does that. But primarily, what we're looking to do here is not heal Farah. We literally don't care about Farah unless she's down on the ground. Everything else is based on us looking at our um, front line. Okay, so let's see what we're doing. So again, to, you know, fine little position we're taking up. It's fine. We're trying to heal people up. This is great. This is good. This is what I want to see. We don't want to poke around the corner. Um, I'm going to ask why we use that. Now, again, this is a part and parcel with the new overanalyzed. Why did we just burn our cooldown? Why did we just burn our AoE heal for, for literally nothing? There was no reason to do that. We're not damaged. Um, nobody's damaged, basically. It, it was stupid. Like, we could have just fired primary or our, our secondary fire, I guess, but our primary heal into the Reinhardt and everything would have been fine. So do be aware of that. Don't waste your cooldowns. It's criminal. It's what a lot of players do. Um, like you, you may talk about positioning being okay and fine and you don't know what's happening, but wasting of cooldowns is also crazy. Okay, our Reinhardt. So, okay... Okay, uh, let's just go back a second here, because I'm not, I'm not, I, 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 uh, I'm not, ugh, I am fussed with what you've just done, and I'm not fussed with what you've just done, because it was a reaction. So, watch this as it breaks out. Our Reinhardt goes in, and we lose line of sight. And I think what happens here is we panic. And I don't like it when we panic like that. Because this, I mean, okay, it gets the Reinhardt, but look what Rein is doing. Rein is his barrier up. He probably isn't going to die. Their Reinhardt is going to have to really super commit to him. And does he do that? No, he's backing off. But even so, look, he's getting healed by Mercy. So Mercy has just decided to ignore our Pharah. Where is our Pharah? Did she die? Uh... <laughs> Where's our Pharah? Does anybody know where the Pharah is? She, uh, maybe she's... Where is this Pharah? She's not dead. Oh, okay, she was in the tree hiding from me. Um, so yeah, she's probably going to need healing by... <laughs> and McCree's on a mad flank. Okay, typical. Um, but the issue here I've got is it was a bit of a panicked reaction there to throw that down we didn't need to use it now it's okay it's okay because you've reacted that's the thing we've i really want to get out there at least you reacted but using this cooldown which is your best cooldown you've got for lamp which just means people don't die obviously it's super powerful 
Um, Reinhardt was always going to be okay because he was going to deploy his shield. And crucially, he was already getting healing from the Mercy. And I think this might be the theme of this overanalyzed, where you need to be aware of what your other support is doing. Like, if they're pumping healing into the front line, try not to panic too much. I mean, okay, the reaction here would have straight up been, I need to try and keep my Reinhardt alive, and I'm going to fire some healing towards him. Which you are looking to do. We're trying to get around the side there. But we have burnt one of our cooldowns, which is fine, because it did give him that added bit of protection. So I'm not... It's like I said, I'm not super down on it, but it was a bit of a rushed reaction. Not an optimal decision, let's say. But it was it was okay. But as you get through the ranks, I'd expect you to make better decisions. Okay. So now we're going a bit of DPS. Um, one thing I'll say about DPS on Batiste is I don't have an issue with that, but I do if you're Reinhardt's 1 HP. Right? So in no world should you ever, ever be doing damage if your tanks are getting absolutely slammed. And our Reinhardt is off on a mad one. <laughs> so, uh... You... Oh, okay, this is the right thing to do. I mean, so this, again, is another thing that we should probably talk about. It's identifying the way that player is playing your team. So uh, you're the support. You're the main healer, effectively. Mercy is obviously another main healer, but she's got other priorities with the Pharah. This guy, if he's going to be super aggressive, which it kind of looks like he is because he's already rushing forward. He doesn't care. He's not taking any prisoners. We need to make sure that we're up there keeping him alive because not only is it going to give us loads of ultimate charge and it's going to keep him alive and he might even kill people. He might create space. But us staying on the payload here would be stupid. So I'm glad that you didn't do that because we've got Mercy on the payload. That's fine. We need to get through here and keep him alive. But it just comes back to the idea of reading the way your players play. If this was a more cautious Reinhardt, then we wouldn't have to chase him down. We wouldn't have to play on the front foot all of the time. But what I will say is it's good news that you've got an aggressive Reinhardt because at least he's going to move forward. Okay, so that heal again was not really too effective. Our main thing here is to keep that Rhine alive. We... Okay, charge back in. Oh, all right, so... I'm going to go back here because this is where you should 100% have used Immortality Field. Like, this is the major power of this hero in the game. You can stop people from dying. It is so powerful. It is just incredibly powerful. So let's slow this down and watch the way this plays out. I noticed it straight away. A lot of you guys watching the replay have noticed it straight away. Watch this. One thing I do say about Lamp as well is it has to be in line of sight of the target for it to work. You can't put Lamp behind a wall and it doesn't have direct line of sight to the target you want to keep alive, right? But in this case here, it didn't matter. So, let's just go back to normal speed because you'll see it. Watch the charge here. You can, you can see the charge is about to come through. There you go. You can hear this charge. You know that charge is coming. We should have had Lamp deployed. We should have just threw it down into the ground because it would have kept McCree alive. McCree would have been charged into the wall, but he wouldn't be dead. And then he could back out. Our Ryan could maybe go back in. Maybe our McCree's even got flashbang, does he? He might have flashbang available because he wasn't close to anyone. No, he tried to use it, I think, when he got charged. Um, but we could have kept him alive there. No, we kind of didn't. But it's fine because like we're... we're We've capped this point here. It doesn't really matter. Like, a lot of this now is just the enemy team have overextended. We need to push forward and make sure we keep our Rhine alive. Uh, and also, as well, um, you'll see a lot of very top-tier Batiste players will probably give you this bit of advice. Um, you always should be charging your passive. So, crouching obviously charges your super jump. Always do that. So, look at where our Reinhardt is. Look at this here. This is where I've got a problem, right? This guy, yeah, okay, he's crazy. He's so far forward. But we could be up there with him. Our Farah's here as well. We should just leave this to the Mercy. Where even is the Mercy? There's the Mercy. So the Mercy's pushed forward. Hmm. I mean, I know why you're chilling here, because you're just sort of moving the payload. Eh, it's a difficult one. But does this Reinhardt die? If he does, then he wouldn't if we were up there. Okay, now we're starting to get some healing in onto him. And this, again, is another point we need to make. <laughs> moving the payload, obviously, is the win condition, right? But if you were to rush up there with your team, if you kill the whole enemy team then it kind of doesn't matter because you're still going to be have control of the payload and you can come back and push it. So I'm not entirely super fussed with you staying on the payload at this moment in time. I'd have been running forward because I'm like, uh-oh, I need to support this Reinhardt. And maybe you... In fact, let's just imagine if you push forward. So think of it this way, right? Okay, let's just speed this up a bit so we get a bit of movement. Yeah, so our Reinhardt's going, he's going, he's going. Now we're panicking. So now, at this point, right, if we were running forward here, let's just imagine we're here. Let's see what our Reinhardt could do. So if we were healing him now, he, he might be able to kill their Reinhardt because he could be super aggressive. But then, like, we sort of come into range here so we're healing anyway. So, yeah, it's not it's not too bad. Like, it's not, like I said, it's not a major disaster, but these are little things we need to keep thinking about if we want to try and progress through the ranks because you can't just play on autopilot, not with Batiste. And Batiste is so powerful, he can just make, he can just change the game. We should just get onto the high ground here and, sh and absolutely shoot them, to be honest. So we've lost. Okay. Oh, we don't have Immortality Field. That's okay. We like taking this Echo 1v1, but we win. That's fine. Uh, yeah. 
Valkyrie Mercy is always very difficult to kill. Like a lot of people meme on this and be like, oh my god, so bad you've died to a Valkyrie Mercy. It's especially crushing if you're like McCree or somebody and you're like, uh oh, and she just comes and destroys you. She is so hard to hit and she's got loads of regen. It's very difficult to do any kind of damage to it. So at the moment, we've seen like fairly decent play to be honest from you. We shouldn't be eating that either as well. Immortality field into that. Okay, and then we should start pumping healing into it. Great. I mean, the massive anti-nade off, uh, anti off that Anna has totally screwed us. Which is... Uh, <laughs> oh. Okay, so a bunch of things happened there. You played okay. There's not much more you could have done there. They invested a grav and we invested a immortality field to try and counter it. It didn't quite work because they threw a nade into it. It's fine. The problem in all of that gameplay there was not you. It was Azaria. She burnt our grav. I don't know why. Like, it was a lost fight and she just invests it. This, again, is something that will happen. It happens at every rank of the game. You just have to be like, whatever. All right, then. So, now we're using our ultimate. And this is something I haven't really spoke about so far. Let's just see how this plays out. <clears throat> because Batiste's ultimate is obviously incredibly powerful right now. And uh, it's allowed us to push a little bit of space there, which is fine. We want to be careful of this McCree, because if he flashbangs us, good reaction. Excellent reaction. Okay, excellent. That, so I was about to go into a rant about that. We need to immediately immortality field and take him out, but you did that. So again, this is showing me a very high understanding of the hero, and I like to see that. It's good. So this position is fine if we don't die to that. We shouldn't. Okay. Okay, and again, this is like the alpha position. We should just go back into the high ground. It's 100% the alpha position on top of the saloon. So we should be up here, really, just chilling. Totally fine, because we can spam them as they come through. Yep, yeah, you're up here. I love it. It's great. So, you know, positioning-wise, general positioning, I think is fine. Um, you know, that little niggle with the payload, but to be honest, it's not really anything. Yep. Yeah, maybe, maybe keep your eyes on what's going... Okay, so this is where I'm going to get a little bit... If we lose our tank now, it's going to be... Okay, massive shatter. So, right then. So, you guys know what I'm about to pick up here. It's the use of immortality field. Like, you can't... This this keeps people alive, right? Look at what we've got available here. So, we've got our self heal. We're doing damage. It's fine. It's great. Whatever. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, now this is the point where we start taking damage. What we should do here is yeet our immortality field down onto the point. Because we need to keep those guys alive. We don't know what could happen. If our tanks if our tanks die, this is going to be bad times for us. The Mercy, it's okay that she's attacking us, right? Because, well, she's not healing it. Like, I don't know what she's doing. She should be healing her team, not coming after us. This is crap play off the Mercy. So we just abuse this, right? Again, this just comes back to reading the way players are in a game and, and just picking up the way they play. Like this Mercy, who needs a daddy, <laughs> just wants to kill everyone, which is okay every time she valks. So what's the, what's the reaction here from us? We should be charging our alternate, uh, our passive all the time so we can jump. We've got our uh, shift heal available so we can just pop regenerative field and heal ourselves. And then sure, we could fire at her and do damage. But the main component here is we throw immortality field down here just to make sure we get that point. So imagine immortality field's chucked down there. We're a bit early on our regen there. We didn't really need to do it then because pff, whatever. This is an overreaction, an overinvestment on the mercy aggression. And then we're looking down here and thinking, uh-oh, everyone's purple. This is bad news. But if we'd thrown our immortality field down there, then we could have carried on firing and pumping healing in from above. Nobody can touch us from up here. Like, we are literally untouchable. So let's speed this back up. And see where this goes. So now we've got a Zen with us, which is fine. Um, Zen is obviously quite powerful right now, simply because... Okay, good reaction. Um, we should just stay. Stay with our a soldier. Okay, our soldiers run back to the front line. But we do know there's a Mercy behind. So this is one of those moments where we'd say to the team, guys, uh, not Mercy, sorry, a Tracer. There's a Tracer behind us. We need to be aware of this, guys. Don't let her... Like, she's behind us, right? McCree should know. She's going to try... I mean, where is she? She's going to come out at some point. Yeah, she's going to try and get the Zen. Now, like, again, this comes back to reading the game, right? We know that she's behind us, and we're just like, what? We're just deciding to push forward. What about Zen? Like, let's slow this down. Zen is about to get assassinated, I think. In fact, I don't even care what you're doing. What's, what's going to happen to Zen? Yeah, Zen's about to get assassinated. This is, this again, is not playing with your other support. I mean, Zen might kill her, but, uh, you know, if you want to go through the ranks, if you're looking to increase your, 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 your skill effectively, this is one of those moments where we look at positioning and we go, well, this ain't really too good. You can still react and you do have, um, yeah, you've got immortality field available. So you can still react and save the Zen. The question is, will you react though? Let's see what happens. So this is like Tracer wants this. Okay, we did sort of react, but he's dead. Now, he did die from just random crossfire from their Zen, right? So it wasn't like... 
it was Trace that killed him. But actually, it was Trace that killed him. You should not have let that happen. This should never have happened in a million years. We keep Zen alive. But because we're not aware of it, I mean, if we just go back and watch this through, you're, you're simply not aware of it. You know Trace is behind you, right? We know she's there. So why are we deciding to just ignore that she's there and then go, oh, you know what? I'm just going to do stuff on the front line. And Ryan's playing quite well as well. I like the way he's pushing forward. So yeah, we're here with Chill. Zen is about to get pressured. Watch his health bar at the top right. Okay, uh oh, we turn around. Oh my God, Zen. I'm going to try and keep you alive. See, we could have immortality fielded from up there and kept him alive as well. But if we were just simply next to him, it would have deterred the Tracer anyway. And we could have used our regen field on him. We know it's going to hit him. We could have immortality fielded again. Basically, we should have looked after our Zen. Now, this becomes, uh, again, part of the conundrum when you're playing a support hero. You need to be aware of your other support and how you both interlock and work together. Now, Zen is very fragile. Zen is a DPS, basically, in, in, in support, guys. He's going to do loads of damage, but he's a glass cannon. We need to keep him alive. We're not going to instantly die because we can heal ourselves. And I'm going to pause this. And we can... Uh, use the mortality field. Now, we haven't spoke about usage of this at the moment. Um, It is like immortality field is a very strong when you use it on yourself and then you just start shooting people, which you, you've shown me you've got the aim to do it. And we've kind of seen you do that a little bit earlier on when you killed the uh, the Reinhardt, I think it was, uh, I believe. But up until this moment in time, I don't really have too, too many issues with the way you've been using this. It generally charges fast. You just yeet it down. I mean, here, where else are we going to put this? Well, that's the question, right? Because there's a couple of answers to this. So McCree, it would be nice in front of McCree. It kind of is in front of McCree. He's got a dead eye available. Great. Soldier, though, is the other one. If Soldier's got tack visor available, and it looks like Soldier's going to take the high ground. I mean, if I was playing Soldier, I'd be up here. Uh, he needs to be careful of this because if this flash bangs him, he's dead. Um, but like taking high ground positions, let's say maybe he jumps over here and then imagine uh, amplification matrix is in front of him and he's tack visoring through that it is so powerful so there still is a combo here that you can use it's just a little bit more difficult to set up um uh, and yeah but one thing i do want to, you to kind of be aware of immortality um amplification matrix isn't really the be all and end all of the power of this hero the power is you can just stop people from dying so nice great i like the way your mccree was there waiting behind kill the tracer it's great i mean again so We've got this... So, in our head, we've got the little mini combo down of... I can 1v1 a McCree if I jump up to him and use Immortality Field, which is true. Now, a better McCree will destroy the drone and then probably kill you, right? So, you've got to be careful of that. But I don't like that you're investing such a... such a Like, this is such a crucial cooldown. I mean, let's just run through this. I, imagine if you've got Immortality Field available now. Let's see if we end up needing it. Uh-oh. Looks like we're going to need it. Our McCree's going to get kills off this. Yeah. Hmm. So, we were lucky. We were lucky. Because I was looking at those alt figures and I'm, well, the, the alt charge graphic, and I'm like, yeah, this is going to be. It's bad. We, we really need Immortality Field. So, one thing we've noticed with your play so far is the usage of Immortality Field or Lamp or whatever you want to call it, drone. We're not really paying attention to the ultimates the enemies are going to have online. We need to keep it for certain alts, right? We need to always have it available to try and counter Graviton. If we don't have it for Graviton, we lose. Obviously, we've got Zen, and Zen could use his uh, Transcendence for Grav as well. Um, but we can just use one of our cooldowns to try and negate that. So we've always got to be aware of that. And again, this will happen higher through the ranks where teams will just combo more and more with this. Like, imagine if Tracer threw a Pulse Bomb into that Grav. Uh, everyone will take tons of damage and die. But they won't if you've got the drone down. Yeah, they'll take the damage, but they won't die. That's the thing we've got to be aware of. These are like little sort of mini micro plays. Um, but I did like your positioning towards the end of, end of that uh, game there. I think that was totally fine. Um, always, always, always be charging your passive. It's only... like it, It's something you should always live by as a Batiste player. If you go and watch any of the high tier uh, Batiste streamers out there, um, you'll see they always do this, right? People like ML7 and, and people like that. Watching pros, you'll get some really, really good... Uh, feedback from especially when overwatch league comes out again uh, and if batiste gets played there which he probably will unless he gets nerfed go and watch batiste pros play and watch all their little micro plays it's so goddamn good a lot of it is centered around usage of immortality field because you don't want to get the drone destroyed but you also so let me just uh, break this down like the thing with drone is if you threw the drone here so imagine i am the drone like so we're looking from the position of the drone and the drone is here the drone is keeping everyone alive because it can see them but if reinhardt was through the wall here, it would not keep him alive, even though it looks like it would on the floor. Even though you'd see the graphic, like the little circle, and Ryan probably thinks, oh yeah, I'm okay, I can stand here. He would die because he is not in line of sight of the drone. This means that when you're using your drone, you have to be clever. So you couldn't just like lob your drone here 
because it can't see anything. Yes, the graphic might show you on the floor that it's touching Zarya maybe, but it can't see anyone. So you always have to be aware of that. Similarly, if you just throw it straight out into the open, obviously they're going to shoot it and kill it, which isn't ideal. But even then, it still means they have to shoot at a different target. And that's why it's so powerful. Okay. So they've got a Widow now. Our uh, Pharaoh's going to need to be careful of this. Okay, Winston's down. Fine. Alternating between damage and damage. And we haven't really spoke about that too much, about alternating damage and healing. Nice reaction. See what I mean about always having jump charge? Because you always want to be able to react if someone comes at you. So we've lost our front line here. So this is something we need to go back and have a look at. Why have we lost our front line? And could we have prevented the front line being killed? Because, uh, okay, we've got res and res should get invested on the Mercy. Uh, on the Reinhardt even. But what has happened to our Rhine and why has he died? So it's the Doomfist. Okay. So what has happened here? I think our Mercy was looking towards getting him. Doomfist comes in and has harassed us. Like we're like this is like a desperate. <laughs> it's like, no, please don't die, Ryan. But then he's dead. Um, yeah, this is a desperate scenario. I mean, the one thing we could do is we could throw down Immortality Field on his corpse and maybe Mercy gets a clutch resin. Um, it's one possibility there. Winston's obviously in our back line. We do know that obviously because we've just watched this that you drop down and take out the Winston, which is okay. Mercy doesn't really seem to care about the res. She's gonna go for it. Yeah, she is. So that's the thing here, right? This is very, very risky from the Mercy. But you could keep Mercy alive. And again, this just goes back to being aware of what's going on in the game beyond what's just in front of us. I mean, you're high plat, so the sky's the limit here. But you... Uh, like, so on the... Let's just play this. So nice play off Zarya. So, okay, and we did throw it down and it was delayed. So I was being a little bit overly harsh. Could have been out there a little bit earlier. But you are showing me that you do know that this is the right thing to do. It was just a little bit sort of delayed because we were more worried about the uh, Winston in our face. But look at McCree. I think we did use our um, regenerative field to keep him up. And I think we pumped heals into him as well, maybe. Um, but yeah, it's good, but it's a little bit delayed. You could have made this, this decision flow could have been a little bit better. But still, honestly, it's pretty good. So let's go back into this and see what happens now. Also, it's really good play by Azaria to keep uh, the Mercy alive. Don't be afraid of pushing forward here. Because we know Widow's dead. Like we, we, yep, fine. Just, just be aware that Widow could be spawning back and she could be killing us. Okay. So, see the thing with this Reinhardt, he is really all oh, mercy. He's really up there. He's really pushing super hard, which is good. Um, but your mercy has adapted her play to try and keep him alive as well, which I think is really good from the mercy player. Yeah, this is going to be nice, 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 nice. See, that was an obvious use of the drone, right? It was 100% you had to use it there because he was going to die. If we lose our Reinhardt, we lose this fight. Right. So next up, we've got drone um, amplification matrix available. And the question is going to be, how do we use this? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, this was somewhat of a panic amplification matrix. I think you know that as well. Uh... Yeah, I mean, I, I could be overly harsh on that and say, you know what, why didn't you just stay on top of the, on top of Big Earls and just pop the Amp Matrix up there and maybe try and pick somebody off from well, above. Maybe just use it to get additional healing out to your front line. Uh, we'd lost that fight though. And, and the choice to invest that ult there, I don't think it would have made a difference either way. Like wherever we use that, I don't think we're ever going to um, make enough of a difference to sort of win that fight. Okay. Mortalic field sort of keeps us alive there. Yeah. Okay, I mean... Oh, that's such a bad res. Good job uh, we died. Or oh, she died before she got off. But yeah, like that... There's not much you could do there. Like every... You really had like no option. You just had to launch your drone out there. There was so much pressure at the door. Don't beat yourself up too much about that. Whatever. It was a loss, of course. It would have taken some sort of hero play. Basically, it was 90% in favor of the enemy team taking that fight. So don't worry about that too much. So the question becomes now, we need to set up and we need to play with that other healer. So now we've got an Anna. So what's the... Like, I'll ask you the question. What does Anna bring to the table? And, what, and how do we play with Anna? Well, Anna brings a massive amount of frontline healing again. So now we've got a ton of healing, like an absolute massive quantity of healing we can smash out onto the front line. It's really, really good. She is quite sturdy as well. She can look after herself, but I'd always keep my eye on Anna. I wouldn't want her to be too far away from me. The problem now is when we look at our team, we've now got this. And this is... Um, 
it's probably not going to swap because it's uh, it's got a golden it's got a golden weapon. I don't know, but like this this swap to Anna might not be optimal. Maybe the Mercy would have been the better play to be honest um, for this game. Now I'm not saying meta wise because everyone will be like Sly. Well, Anna isn't really super super meta. Surely Mercy would be a little bit stronger. But you've always got to play what the enemy team have got and what you've got. You have to. That's that's the way you win Overwatch. You don't just mindlessly play the meta unless the enemy team are playing whatever the meta is and you're mirroring them. Then sure, but that's not the case here. So. Yeah, just be aware that now we've got more healing. Um, it's not that we can be more lax about it, but we just need to be aware that it's 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 the healing scenario has changed. Whereas when it becomes Zen, obviously we've got a massive problem where we need to keep Zen alive. Whereas Anna, she kind of keeps herself alive. Right. Nice shot there. That was actually really nice. That kept her alive. That was really nice play there. Can we eat in a? Yep, that's totally fine again. So yeeting and lamp there just to keep people alive, it's totally fine. It's absolutely fine there. I mean, I know it's got a big cooldown on it, but this is the end of a fight. We'll probably get it available by the next time the enemy team come into fight. And you, you do realize you can stand on this as well. You can you can sort of stand on this, I think. So you could get some cheeky shots in. Uh, you can also chill here as well on this. If you wanted to and just fire some shots through. Remember, you can just jump everywhere. So always jumping, always doing stuff. Always, always, always charging that jump. It's like, it's the gospel to play this hero by. Like, it should be charged now. Because uh, we could be jumping up in the air like this, jumping up, popping shots down through the gap, uh, literally doing anything just to try and charge our ulti because we could just throw our ult down here again and use it for ourselves just to fire shots into the enemy. I mean, we've got our ult available, but you get what I'm saying, right? Our Reinhardt, what's he doing? Okay. I think, he, I think he's, a bit, he's a bit of a character, our Reinhardt. Okay, so I want to ask what we're doing on the floor here because we are exposing ourselves to a lot of stuff that we don't need to be exposed to. Like, they're coming in pretty hot now and we don't want to be down here with Brig. We certainly do not want Brig on top of us. <laughs> Brig got absolutely deleted. Okay, Brig, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> Goodbye, Brig. I do like Batiste. He's a good hero. Like, Batiste is one of those things where he's... Um... Oh, Nice. Immortality field work. You, you, this McCree must hate you. But yeah, I do like McCree. Like, being one of the more modern heroes in the game, he, he's obviously... He just does more stuff than all the heroes, which is a bit of a feels bad moment. Or oh, not like Anna, though. She's first first new hero added to the game. And uh, yeah, she was insane. What the hell? Anyway. Yeah, so I think... Nice kill. Although she was emoting it like or something. Maybe she's about to throw dynamite, actually. I don't know. You need to be careful. Ooh. Look at that brick. Like, what is that? A flanking brick? I have never seen the likes of it. So we are respecting the Widow. I do like to see that. We really don't want to keep peeking that, though. Okay. That, again, that's a fine drone. So, so, so what are you doing? Like, th what the hell are you doing here? Like, we, we know Widow's there. I, I mean, I think you want to take her on. But what I've got news to you, you're not going to beat Widow in a 1v1. You might beat this, uh, <laughs> you might beat this trash Widow, <laughs> but you're not going to beat, you know, a decent Widow. He's just going to blow your brains out. I mean, this Widow might even still blow your brains out. So this is really weird decision making from you because we were safe here. We can still do our job from this position. We can still heal. Instead, we jumped up here, a little bit of cheeky play. I never realized there was a McCree picture there. <laughs> I've never realized that. What? Uh... Yeah, this is not good. We're being really, really cheeky here. Yeah, at least we realized and backed off, although now we've got an ash behind us. We've been antenated. We need to look at some healing gear for our team. Uh, or some of our team got antenated. I think our Anna got antenated there. Okay, fine. One HP Anna. So let's just go back here and, and look at this. I think there's a bit of an issue here, like a split personality. It's like we're trying to do damage, but we're also not healing as well. Yeah. So, I mean, again, it's been, it is being a little bit overly critical here, but you there was hesitation here. We were more interested in killing this uh, Widowmaker than actually healing our tanks. And yes, sure, our tanks didn't take too much damage. And they're never going to die there because Anna's healing them as well. But like our main priority is always to keep the front line alive with Batiste. You're not doing your job if your tanks are constantly dying um, or they're just not getting the healing they, they need. And, and to be honest, most throughout most of this game, you are giving them the healing they need. So our Reinhardt, again, is super advanced here. He's just memeing. He's doing whatever to them. <laughs> waving at them. 
You know, this is, uh... Uh oh. Okay. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. So again, this just goes back to playing what you've got in front of you, right? And you've got a suicidal Reinhardt, and you had to use your immortality field there to keep him alive. I'm totally fine with that. It's great. It's fine. Whatever. I'd do that myself. Like, you can't let him die. The guy's obviously just on a mad one, so you've just got to play with it, right? We need to respect this Widow, because the only problem we've got here is if we keep playing cheeky like we are, we're going to get shot by Widow, and then we're dead, and then there's a problem. Okay, so now we can... Uh, we're going to Ant Matrix, but we need to be right on the edge here for Ant Matrix. Oh, it's fine. We don't need to have Matrix because we've got the kills. Can hear Roadhog super close. So they should have one more push here. And this obviously means we're just going to use everything. We should be able to keep our Reinhardt alive here. Uh, Okay, Brig. So they've thrown. Like th th This again is something that happens a lot in Overwatch. The enemy team have just given up. Like I'll, I'll never understand. Uh, yeah, whatever. I'll never understand why... At this level, like, we, I see it all the time in plat uh, overanalyzed. And in diamond as well. You lose one fight and the enemy just, they just give up. Or, well, or your team just give up. It's like, guys, don't ever give up. Keep playing because it's just one fight. Like, what the hell? Things, like, a, a million different things can happen in Overwatch. Okay, so just to recap this. What I want you to do is be aware of what your other support is and what its primary role is. So if it's Mercy and you've got a Farrah or an Echo... Expect them to pocket them. And when they are, you keep the front line alive. Sometimes, though, they might help with frontline healing. If they do, like at the very start of this replay, where she did help with frontline healing, then just be aware you don't need to burn your cooldowns as fast as you need to. Talking of cooldowns, Immortality Field was used pretty okay, to be honest. Um, but be aware of what enemy ultimates are coming online. Grav is an easy, easy ultimate to predict when it's online. After Grav has been used, you know when it's going to be up again. It's a long charging ultimate. Expect to see it in like maybe three fights time, right? So you've got to be aware and you've got to make sure you've got your immortality field available for that. Because if you don't, you're just probably going to die. Uh, unless you've got a Zen who can trance, for example, in that. Um, the other thing as well is we're doing damage when sometimes we should be healing. But that is just something that will come with playing loads of Batiste. From what you're showing me here, you are a good player. I want you to charge your passive more as well. And by more, I mean all of the time. Like, literally charge this every time. There's no world in which Batiste doesn't have his passive charge. You are charging it like mad. So here, this was the example where Mercy was healing our front line. He was going to be okay, and we threw down our immortality field and lost it. And obviously, the exercise I always like to play is what kind of value would we get if we still had that available now? Uh, we, I already did in this video, I think, so I'm not going to go through it again. But, like, if, if people are dying now, we'd have kept them alive with Immortality Field, for example, if it was still available. Um, yeah, and beyond that, like, your amplification matrix usage was okay. Uh, there, there was some maybe questionable uses of it, but to be honest, it, it's an ultimate which, yeah, you can get a ton of value from if you combo it with certain heroes. So, you know, maybe you combo it up with your McCree, and then when we got a, a soldier, I believe, when our Farrah played soldier for a little bit, you know, if they use TAC Visor, yeah, yeah, sure, you could, like, pop it for that. Um, but overall, it's not an ultimate that's going to win the game. Uh, it's a strong ultimate, but the thing with Batiste is knowing when to use Immortality Field and knowing when to just heal and not do damage. But I think you're a good player, and I think, honestly, this this will probably help you a ton, and this will help a lot of main support players out there. Just just change your methodology and your ideology towards playing the, the game when you are a support. Um, instead of just playing what's straight up in front of you, like look around at the bigger picture. Who is my other support? How does my tank play? Who do I need to focus to keep alive? When do I need to use my cooldowns? They're very basic questions, and it's different for every single match you go into. But if you ask yourself that, you'll become really good at the game. I reckon this player can easily get to master. No, there's no, no doubt in my mind. It, 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 easily. All right, guys. If you do want coaching, then remember to send in your video clips to me in the video link description below. Or go to unitloss.com forward slash overanalyzed and submit the clips away. And uh, I'll do my best to go through them. Remember, I get loads of them sent in. Uh, and remember, every time the game updates, we lose all of the replays, which is super annoying. But it's just the way Overwatch is. Maybe it'll change for Overwatch 2. I don't know. Uh, whenever Overwatch 2 comes out. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. And I will catch you lovely lot on the next video. Toodaloo.